What's up guys, it's Meg and it's that time of the week again where we get to discuss the latest Fear the Walking Dead episode. Today we're discussing season two, episode four, called Blood in the Streets. What did you guys think of the episode? Uh, I was actually very pleasantly surprised at how uh, good I thought the episode was. I liked the pace of it, I liked the amount of action they had, and I really liked the backstory for Strand here. So let's get right into the review. Probably the best part for me in this episode was learning Strand's backstory. So this entire season and the end of last season, we've kind of been wondering who Strand really is. What are his motives, as Daniel has asked before? Uh, what? Why did he bring our group along? You know, where is he going? And what kind of person is he really? So the writers have kind of been playing him as this, like, maybe an antagonist. Like, we don't know if he's going to end up being this bad guy at the end or if he's really going to be a good guy, you know, or something in between. We just don't know that much about him. But there's been lots of hints that he's been hiding something so far this season. And so we finally figure out Strand's motives and and we see this this story essentially play out here where he meets this guy he takes advantage of him by stealing his money not expecting the guy to ever be able to track him down or find him um, you know unbeknownst to him he has picked the wrong guy to mess with and this guy basically comes to him and rather than turning him in uh, to the police or you know anything like that he has made Strand obligated to him and I really liked that a lot of these lines that this guy and I think his name is Thomas or Tomas I can't remember exactly um, but a lot of the lines that we hear this guy say for example you're obligated to me now are these lines that we have heard Strand say uh, you know in previous episodes when he said that Nick is now obligated to him so I really liked that um, you can kind of see how Strand's character has developed and why he does the things that he does and these guys, these two men developed this relationship and at first were kind of like business partners, what is this, something more, come to find out that it looks like they were lovers and that they both really cared about each other. And the last scene we see of them before present day is of Thomas saying, you know, don't go there, don't go, you know, basically it was at the very start of this apocalypse when people were dying and things were happening, but, but you know things were still up and running and it was kind of very unusual people were just getting really sick nobody knew what to think and that was the last scene we saw of them together where basically you know he has to go uh, I think Strand had to go take care of business or something and he's like it won't take very long and you know basically they want each other to come back to each other and so we it leads us to believe that Strand's motives for going to Mexico are that Thomas is there. And that's what I believe. I don't think he's dead. I think he firmly believes that Thomas is still there. And that is what his motives are. And uh, when we see him on the boat here, and I was very confused, you know, because we didn't, when he jumped off the boat, we didn't know all of the story yet. And so I was very confused as to why he had the gun why he didn't just blow these guys away and then I, I realized I guess from what viewers have said is that Daniel actually took the ammunition I don't know anything about guns guys but took the ammunition so it was useless to him so you know at the last minute we see Strand um, jump into the raft and head off and trying to escape and I was like upset at first going well he's not even gonna help our group at all after all they've been through he's not even gonna do anything for them and I was really upset and you know I didn't even really feel that bad when um, they shot at the raft also was a little bit confused as to whether or not he was even in there but now it makes sense you know at that moment where he realized that he couldn't defend Abigail anymore and what means more to him than Nick and his family is the thought of getting to Thomas and that is his driving motive here that no matter what happens he's willing to um, do anything absolutely anything to get back to the person that he loves and it really makes you feel for Strand and you start to think wow well I would do the exact same things that he has done I you know in order to ensure that I would get to my loved one uh, and, and it really makes you like 
understand him more and so I'm I'm really excited about uh, Strand's character moving forward here I'm excited to find out whether or not Thomas is still alive I'm a little bit worried because I sort of feel like those kind of happy endings don't last very long so even if he still is alive probably by the finale he's gonna die um, and I liked that Madison even though you know they have had their trust issues here that Madison still went after him and rescued him from the water so Strand is still alive uh, he's back on the boat we were left with with this crazy cliffhanger of Travis and Alicia being uh, basically kidnapped, taken onto Connor's um, boat. And they got away and now we don't really know where they are or how they're going to get back. And it looks like next episode is going to focus a lot on Travis and Alicia and how they're going to escape. So I'm really excited to see our group split up there. Uh, I like the, the different dynamics here. We haven't seen a ton of interaction between Alicia and Travis, so that'll be interesting as well. Um, but back to this episode, it starts out with Nick uh, swimming in the ocean. And it's a very confusing moment here because um, when we see him in the water, uh, he obviously, I don't think he anticipated such a rough swim to shore, but um, it's, it was very confusing because we see the helicopter going overhead and we see um, boats in the water that are not our boats um, with spotlights, you know, kind of scanning the water. And we see all of these different lights. And to me, what I thought it was, was I thought we were actually at the Mexican border or something like that. Like this was what was left of the military or the government or, you know, some version of what was left of society here. And they are patrolling to ensure that no one gets past, you know, into the border. Okay. So that was my thought. And then I, all of the little lights out in the distance, I was assuming were potentially like, um, survivors, people in boats or whatever, uh, you know, trying to get in. Okay, so that was my thought. Now, they never once uh, tell us what that is, and they never explain it any further. So we find out that wherever Nick is here, this is not at the border. They are not at the border yet, okay? Maybe they're close to it, and that's maybe what they were trying to portray there, that they were very close to it. But the fact that we never, I mean, Nick would have had to swim a really long ways, I feel like, because when we see our yacht, it's nowhere, you don't see any surrounding boats or anything like that. Um, and they were actually quite taken aback when um, the two people, who's <laughs> the Jesse McCartney character, I don't know any of their names, and I can't remember, I think his name was Jack, uh, when they board the yacht, they are the only little raft, you know, to be seen out there. So it was very confusing. Um, I didn't like that they didn't explain it any further as to what exactly that was. It was kind of left for us to figure it out. And then Nick is walking through this um, camp and it, it's like a survive, survivor's camp, but there's no one around. And there's one walker that we see, but there's no bodies anywhere. Nobody's sleeping, but there's fire in, you know, as if, and, and lanterns still on, as if these people have not been gone very long. So that was also very confusing because there was no explanation as to what this survivor camp was, where everyone went. If everyone died, there would be a hell of a lot more walkers there. So it was just kind of like, I don't understand. Um, but come to find out that Nick is going, you know, he's on a mission for Strand. He's going to find this other guy. I can't remember anybody's names in this episode for some reason, but he, uh, he finds this guy and he apparently worked with Thomas Abigail. Um, oh, by the way, we found out that, you know, pretty much everything that the, the boat and probably the house, the beach house, um, that, that Strand had was probably, um, stuff that was either given to him or, or you know, by Thomas or belonged to Thomas or, you know, it sounds like these, from, from hearing their story, there was a lot of money involved in their lifestyle. Like they were opportunists and they made a lot of money. So they're very, very rich. So um, it would make sense that Thomas has connections in places where he could get Strand over the border and this other guy over the border. But now, you know, now the plan was only for two people and now Strand has brought along a whole family as well. So things are going to get difficult here. And I am excited that there are only three episodes left. So hopefully we just keep getting more and more action here and building up. Uh, I'm actually gonna be okay with some sort of like cliffhanger or something like that. I think that would make it really well done. Um, 
for the mid-season finale and it makes you start to wonder who will die. We can't have an entire first half of the season, I feel like, in this kind of show without you know one of our one of our good guys dying here so it kind of makes you start to wonder okay well who who could we see going here um okay i really like this episode i'm happy to see that the story is moving along that we're not spending so much time just like bleh on a boat um i loved daniel and how he was very confident that he could get out of his binds when they were on the boat and so madison the way daniel and madison worked together by madison distracting the pregnant woman and daniel trying to get out i just really liked that um that interaction and those scenes uh i liked seeing our group get roughed up um seeing madison kind of get her head smashed and t you know she's they've been so helpful and and their first instinct in letting these people on the boat was to trust them and to trust that this is a pregnant woman who is you know um sick or has something wrong with her baby and their first instinct still in this world is to trust people and um see the good in people and so i think finally their eyes will be opened more i mean not daniel daniel always sees the bad in everyone <laughs> but you know our characters like travis or madison are gonna have to get a lot harder here because they are now realizing that you can't trust people in this world you know you trusted this woman and she smashed uh not necessarily trusted like she didn't necessarily put her trust in it but she trusted that she was telling the truth and she ended up getting her head smashed into the mirror so you know hopefully it's going to open our group's eyes a little bit more to the reality of what this world is coming to and i'm super excited to see kind of connor's boat and travis and how they're going to escape i think alicia's going to look pretty badass in the next episode hopefully she really works her charm on jack and is able to escape um we hear in the promo that travis says you know if you can escape take the opportunity go like leave me and um and so it'll be interesting to see if she really does leave him or if she'll be able to you know help him as well escape uh all right guys what did you think of the episode let me know in the comments uh i will see you guys next time i don't know if i'm gonna do a dead ahead predictions video um my videos have been kind of wonky lately i've just been like feeling really off lately i've been kind of sad and like there's been a lot of like personal stuff going on so making these videos has been a lot more difficult for me than normal like i haven't had as much joy out of it so i do the reaction videos because they're easy but then when it comes to like sitting down and doing a review even though i really want to talk to you guys about it it's just kind of difficult to force myself to like sit down and do it so i appreciate you guys bearing with me here and being understanding you guys are always so supportive so i know that you will understand um might do a dead ahead predictions might not uh we'll see but either way i will definitely see you guys on sunday for game of thrones reaction and fear the walking dead reaction hope you guys have a wonderful night bye